All right, so uh, 5.1 is the start of the second semester of pre-calculus, right? It's going to be the study of trigonometry. This rare photo, black and white photo of Hipparchus of Nicaea, um, it's, a, it's a great photo. He looks like he was a boss, right? He had a receding hairline, but he had a beard that made up for it, right? Uh, Hipparchus of Nicaea is known as the father of trigonometry. And the reason he's known as the father of trigonometry is because he was the first one to publish and record astronomical tables, trigonometric tables that measured essentially the, the angles between celestial bodies, right? Not distances, but the angles, okay? So this is what people did back before TikTok, right? They went outside, they were marveled by the night sky. And they saw things changing. They saw things moving. So they had wild imagination. And this guy published it. So he is the father of trigonometry. The word trigonometry, though, did not even get used until much, much later, right? 1,600 years later, when Bartholomaeus Petiscus, Barthol Bart, in other words, Bart, Bart Petiscus published a work, 1595, called Trigonometria, trigonometria. And that's where the use of the word trigonometry kind of became in vogue, all right? Trigonometria means two things. Metria means to measure, right? Like geometry is the measure of the earth, right? Shapes. Trigonome is a root that comes from the, the word triangle. The word triangle, of course, means three sides, three shapes, three vertices, and three angles, right? So this means it, it became used with angles. So trigonometry means angle measure. And so the term was retroactively applied, of course, to Hipparchus, who is the father of trigonometry. Now, when you studied geometry back in geometry, you studied what was called Euclidean or just planar, not plain old geometry, which it could be called plain old geometry plain old geometry plain old geometry so you studied shapes right that were just on the euclidean plane which is a flat surface and that that triangle right there could be drawn you know anywhere it could be larger smaller it could be rotated it's just existing out there on two dimensional space what we're going to do is we're gonna start using the things you learn in geometry, but we're going to superimpose upon it a coordinate grid. And now if we superimpose a coordinate grid around these shapes and we standardize how we draw them, now we can start using X and Y coordinates, which means now we can start getting this superstructure that allows us to derive equations and predict, right? So the father of um, geometry, planar geometry was of course Euclid. The father of trigonometry is Hipparchus, but we also have the father of coordinate geometry. And that's what we're gonna be studying. We're gonna be studying coordinate geometry, which is taking all the geometry and putting it on the coordinate plane. The father of coordinate geometry right now is looking over Mr. Redding, kind of looking at him over his shoulder with kind of this, uh, this look of, what's the word, conceit, right? Self-respect in someone we dislike. Um, it's Rene Descartes, the French guy. Okay, in fact, it's called the Cartesian plane by taking uh, his last, his last name and applying it, right? The Cartesian plane, right? The Cartesian plane or the coordinate plane. He's also the guy that said, ergo cogito sum, which means I think therefore I am. So he was a philosopher as well. Um, I believe it was the ontological um, existent, proof for the existence of a God. So anyway, there's, there's a lot of guys involved in, in bringing this to us today, right? I want you to always remember that math is a human endeavor. Right. It, it's people that were out there making sense of the world. You know, they weren't necessarily geniuses, but they were curious uh, and they used a lot of Latin. Right. To publish their work. So 
Bartholo Bar, I don't even, Bart, Bart Petiscus, right? Not the father of trigonometry, but the first to use it. We were saying first period that you really don't see these names much anymore, right? You don't see anybody naming their son Hipparchus, right? My wife wouldn't even let me name our dogs after these ancient Greek mathematicians, right? Like I wanted to name my dog seriously Archimedes, right? And, and she's like, first of all, it's a girl, right? And I'm like, it doesn't matter. We can just call her Archie, right? And then secondly, she says, that's a stupid name. And I was like, Archimedes is one of the three greatest mathematicians to ever live. What if I badmouth Florence Nightingale right in front of you, honey? Florence Nightingale is a nurse, and my wife is a nurse. And she, like, didn't get the illusion. I was like, well, there you go, right? I'm not going to badmouth, you know, nurses in front of you. Don't badmouth Archimedes. Barchimedes. See? She wouldn't have gone for that either. But Barchimedes would be good. Okay, okay. The next dog that I get, I'm going to get a dude. Although when you, when you have a dude in the house, they tend to mark their territory. We had a little male chihuahua one time, and he walked through, and he peed on everything. We couldn't train him not to, right? The girls don't really feel the need to do that, um, you know, whether you're talking about, you know, homo sapiens or canines, right? But I'm going to name it Barkimedes. Okay, you, you, you have some good creative ideas there, Aiden, Aiden. Barkimedes. Nice. All right. Uh, see, this is a two-way street here, right? We're just sharing information. Y'all can come right back at me with something good. I'm coming at y'all with uh, something. Uh, maybe, maybe it's good. I hope you find it good, right? All right. So we talked about trigonometry then being an angle measuring study. We need to define what an angle is. So here it is, an angle, right? And be careful, that's not angel, right? It's easy to kind of get the, the two confused, right? An angle is nothing more than the measure of rotation between two rays, rays sharing a vertex. Okay, so real quickly, what does an angle measure? Rotation. Don't forget that an angle measures rotation. It doesn't measure distance, it measures rotation. So let's go ahead and draw an angle here. You know, from geometry, a ray has a fixed end, which is called the tail. And then it has an open end that's called the head, right? And I use rays to, to uh, point to the parts of the ray. Isn't that funny? Now I draw another ray that shares the tail and comes out over here. So there's the two rays sharing a tail. Now, the angle measures the rotation between them. And you can measure that rotation anywhere along those rays. The distance from the, from the tail doesn't matter when you're talking about rotation. It's the same measure of rotation, whether you measure it way out here or way inside. Now, of course, the length is gonna change, but the rotation doesn't. So we typically label that angle with a Greek letter, like something like alpha, right? Which looks like a fish. But there's another angle in two-dimensional space that is also uh, obtained when we draw that one angle. And it's the other angle. And we can use another Greek letter that I like, beta, right? Capital beta. We got alpha and beta. Beta looks like a capital B on a pogo stick. Alpha just looks like a fish, okay? It looks like a fish like that. And the beta, make sure you draw the beta with the tail, right? It's like a mullet, if you want to think about it that way. All right, looks pretty good. It's a P with a mullet. And then we got an alpha, all right? Now, in, in Euclidean geometry or planar geometry, you could draw this angle anywhere. And as long as that measure of rotation between the two rays was fixed, it would be the same angle. It doesn't matter if it's oriented up or oriented to the side. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is, okay? Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to standardize this process. We're going to take this angle and we're going to fix it down in a specific way. Let me see if I could do that again. We're going to orient it in a very specific fashion. It won't let me do it now. Anyway, we're going to do something like this. We're going to take an X and Y axis, thanks to Descartes, 
And we're going to draw that same angle in a systematic fashion, okay? And now we can start using X's and Y's, okay? So that's what turns geometry or planar geometry, Euclidean geometry into coordinate geometry, okay? So what does an angle measure? Rotation, good. Now, just like any measuring system, whether it's length or, or temperature, um, we have units. So what are the units of angle measure? Well, y'all are accustomed to degrees, right? Degrees. So we might say something like uh, this angle here, which we can also call theta. Theta is like the most commonly used letter. And we typically don't even write the arrows on the little arc, okay, to show it. Um, but we usually write the, the, the name of the angle inside there. Now, it's not only the name of the angle, it's also the measure of the angle. We use it, we use it um, both ways. So this angle might be like 45 degrees, okay? 45 degrees, that makes sense. This unit right here, might have a name, but I don't know what it is. So I call it a degrubble, and I hope that catches on with you. A degrubble is a portmanteau. A portmanteau is either like a leather overnight suitcase bag thingy, or it's a mesh of two words to form a new word, like uneasy, right? A degrubble is a portmanteau that's a combination of, guess what, two words? Degree bubble. Yeah. I thought. For years, I called it a degree bubble, right? Degree bubble, because we didn't have Siri and I was too lazy to look it up. But then it just one day I just slipped and said degrubble and I liked it. So it's a degrubble. I don't know if it'll catch on outside this class, but we'll call it a degrubble in here. You have to have that degrubble then if you're talking about degrees, which is a measure of rotation, okay? Now don't get confused with other versions of degrees, right? If I put a degrubble with a capital F behind it, now we're talking about degrees Fahrenheit, right? If I put a degrubble with the C behind it, we're talking about centigrade or Celsius, right? Kelvin doesn't have a degree bubble. Someone last period said, oh, what about like a, a college degree? And I'm like, yeah, maybe. I don't think they use the degrubble on that, but you know, it's another version of degree. So 45 degrees. Now we need to define what a degree is, right? Like we know, we know intuitively how big one foot is. This is Corpy. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, I'll send her down. All righty. Maria, your counselor, Miss Patterson, would like to see you. So if you go to the if you go to the back back office and just say you're there to see a counselor. It's a different office, but I think you can go to the back. Yeah, yeah, leave it here. If, 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 if it takes longer, I'll put it to the side. But anyway, so we, we know intuitively that this is kind of like 45 degrees. Y'all do have an, a, a nice intuition of what a degree is, okay? And it's because of this, right? In skateboarding, if you go all the way around, all the way around, the X Games are going on right now. One full rotation is how many degrees? Yeah, one rotation is 360 degrees, okay? Now, the question I have for you is, why? Have you ever thought about that? It happened long ago that someone set the standard that one rotation is 360 degrees. We have the decimal system here on planet Earth, right? The decimal system is a base 10 system. Right, and we use base 10 because it's easy to count because we have 10 fingers, right? So metric is built on base 10, but we don't even have to use metric to use decimal, right? I could talk about this angle, instead of being 45 degrees, I could think of it as 45.1 degrees. And that's 45 and one tenth. So it's a decimal system. So long ago, it would have been nice just to make one rotation 100 degrees, right? 100 would have been a good choice. I wasn't at the meeting though. Someone at the meeting said, hey, hey, how about, uh, how about 70, 77.4? And they're like, no, no. How'd you even get in the meeting? And then someone else said, hey, how about 360? And you're like, 
I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's make it 360. And they had all this discussion about why 360 was the perfect number. What were some of the things that came up? Why 360? Oh, that's a big reason. 100 is divisible by a lot of numbers, but 360 is divisible by many, many, many more numbers. Okay. And when we say divisible, we mean that you can divide it without a remainder. It's an integer, right? There's a lot of nice integers that go into 360. This was back before they had like mechanical calculators. So being able to divide it uh, by lots of numbers and come up with integer parts was really, really a nice benefit. Okay. So that's one of the good reasons, right? That's one vote for 360. Yeah. G ratings, like on movies? Oh, I don't even know what that is. What is G rating? Like 400 degrees? I've never even heard of that. I've heard of like G, P, G, R, and then like triple X, like movie ratings. But I've never heard of a G rating for a circle. Oh, a gradient. Oh, okay. A gradient has to do with navigation. Um, I don't know enough to answer that. I don't know enough to answer that, but I will have to look that up. See, I told you this is a two-way street. I'm learning from y'all, y'all learning from me, hopefully. I'm gonna write this down and I'll have an answer. We'll talk about it. A gradient, which is a G rating and it's 400 degrees. Well, you know what? I guess, I guess someone felt slighted that they weren't at the meeting and they're like 360. Pfft, no, man, let's just make it. Let's make it 400. And they're like, no, 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 get out of here. And he's like, well, I'm going to start my own religion, right? That's what happens. People with different ideas. It's just how many people can you get on board with that idea, right? To make it stick. Now, I don't know if that's what happened with the gradient, um, but we'll, I'll look it up. That's awesome. But if you're at the meeting, you say 400, we're going to be like, no, nah, no, 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 not 400. It's divisible by a lot, but not as many as 360. What's another reason? Anyone? Think about back in the day, you have to live. You can't go to HEB. You have to plant crops. Is it helpful to know like when to plant and when not to plant? Yeah. They were very, very observant of the seasons, right? The seasons, right? Fall, winter, summer, spring, fall, winter, summer, spring. The cycle continued. And roughly that whole cyclical seasonal change reoccurred came around full circle if you will every how many days 365 ish 0.25 right so um yeah a lot of people think that we don't we don't know the right answer but because there are roughly 360 days you know in a, in a calendar year now, they might have known there were more than 360 days, but 364, 365.25, not as easy to work with, not as divisible by many numbers. So, you know, maybe they intentionally rounded down to 360. It comes around full circle, once around, right? The Earth goes around the sun at different speeds, faster at the perihelion, but comes full circle or full, full ellipse, if you will, every 360-ish days, right? Another reason goes back to the ancient Babylonians. The ancient Babylonians, believe it or not, also believed in the divisibility of 360 with so many integer divisors. The ancient Babylonians used what was called a sexagesimal, sometimes called a sexadecimal. That G can sometimes be a D. Uh, sexagesimal number system. And a sexagesimal number system is base 60. Wow, the ancient Babylonians, a lot of their writings still remain because they, 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 they wrote, recorded everything on their clay tablets with their cuneiform, which is a pretty cool thing if you ever get to look at it. So why did the ancient Babylonians use base 60 instead of base 10? They had 60 fingers. Yeah, that's an actual known fact about the ancient Babylonians. They've been on earth and they had 30 fingers on one hand and 30 on the other, you would think, right? But no, they are a weird, they were a weird, weird, weird race. They had two fingers on one hand and 58 on the other, right? But they had 60 fingers. No, that's not right. They used base 60 for the same reason Garrett said about 360. 
Base 60 was a sexy number, if you will. A sexy number. This is where the conversation took a turn last period because somebody's mind went into the gutter. And it might have been mine, right? When I say 60 is a sexy number, I don't mean that it's right. I mean that it has lots of divisibility integers, right? It's divisible by lots of integers. Let, let's just start from, uh, from one, right? One, 60 divided by one is 60. Two, 60 divided by two is 30. Three, 60 divided by three works, right? What is it, 20? Four, 60 divided by four is 15. Five, 60 divided by five is 12. Six, 60 divided by six is 10. Seven, fails, right, fails, okay? But we can keep going, right? We can keep going. 60 has lots of integer dividers. So 360 has 60 as one of its divisors, right? 60 degrees times six, you take six 60s and you get 360, right? So we still have carryovers from the ancient Babylonians, believe it or not. If you think about how many minutes are in an hour, how many? 60, right? How many seconds in a minute? 60. That's a carryover from the ancient Babylonians, okay? So um, let's go ahead and define now what a degree is. A degree is a unit of angular measure that's equivalent now to one 360th of a rotation, right? This would be right here, one degree. This circle that this guy is holding up here for us, is, uh, is, is partitioned on 360 pieces. One degree then would be one of those notches, all right? Now this is why GPS coordinates are measured in degrees, right? Because you, you could think of this as a cross section of planet Earth. You have your longitudinal lines, which are called great circles. Great circles are basically the same diameter all the way around. You take them at the poles and you rotate them all of your longitudinal lines have the same circumference, okay? And you can measure degrees, measures of a full rotation, east and west of the prime meridian. But then you also have the great circle that's known as the equator. And then from there, we slice like tomatoes. Then we take an angle up north, and we call that the latitudinal line, or we take a measure south, Okay, it's also called the parallel, right? These are parallel slices. So like the 50th parallel, whatever. This is why GPS navigation uses degrees because it's still built on the same idea of 360 days in a full rotation, okay? Pretty cool. Um, now, we don't have to have full degrees. We can measure parts of degrees, right? Like um, I can have my angle up here, we said being 45 point one it's 45 full degrees and now one tenth of another degree so there are two ways to measure parts of degrees we can use decimal degrees if you want to jump down here decimal degrees is base 10 that's like 43 or 45 point one we have an understanding of what that means right 45 point five degrees is 45 and a half degrees but just like time when we have fractions of an hour we can use smaller units, right? So if I say, oh, I'll be there in 1.5 hours. Some of y'all are like, oh, you mean in an hour and 30 minutes? And you're like, yeah, that's what I said, 1.5 hours, okay? So we can use minutes to denote a part of an hour and we can use seconds to denote a part of a minute. Well, guess what? It's the exact same with degrees, okay? In fact, there are 60 minutes in one degree, okay? Or you write it like this, 60 with a tick mark equals one to grubble. We use the single tick mark to denote minutes, much like in carpentry, we use it to denote feet, right? So in this sense, one degree is like one hour, but you have to be aware of the context. If we're talking about time, 60 minutes is an hour. If we're talking about rotation, 60 minutes is one degree, okay? And of course, then it's the same on the lower unit. We know that 60 seconds equals one minute. And we write it like this, 60 with a double tick mark equals one single tick mark. So like in carpentry, the double tick mark 
means inches in, uh, in wordsmithing, it's a quotation mark. And the single tick mark is a quote inside of a quotation mark. So we reuse symbols all the time. And that's why context is so important, all right? Now, when you write fractions of full degrees in minutes and seconds, we call it DMS notation. And there's, it's an acronym, but again, we don't even need to put the decimals or the periods behind it because we stylize it. DMS notation is degrees, minutes, seconds, all right? So here's what we're gonna do, if we can get through it. We're going to, on example one, we're gonna draw an angle of 76.425, and then we're gonna convert it. So 76.425, well, I need a ray to start with. I'm gonna draw this ray, I'm gonna call this my initial ray. Now, 76 degrees, I can reference straight up, yes? Straight up would be 90 degrees. We know that, right? We have an in intuitive idea of a right angle. So 76.425, I want to draw it without having to measure it. I want it to be reasonable. So I'm going to draw it about right there, okay? And then I'm going to put this arc between it so that I know I'm talking about that angle. Remember, because there's also, there's also this angle, okay? And then I'm going to label it as theta. So now I come over here and say, say theta is... 76.425, and then we put the de Grubble. Now again, in Euclidean geometry, I can draw this anywhere, make it as large, as small as I want, and it's still gonna be 76.425. You might've used a protractor to help you measure angles, right? They were graduated in uh, single degrees, right? So we're not gonna do that. When we draw our angles, we're gonna make our initial ray on the positive X axis. So if you want to superimpose the X and Y axis on it, our initial ray is always going to have a tail at the origin and it's going to point to the right on the positive X axis. We're going to rotate up and we're going to call this the positive direction because now it's a vector because I could easily rotate down. And then this ray, we're going to call the terminal ray. Like a bus terminal is where the bus stops, right? So when we rotate counterclockwise, we're going to call that the positive direction. Now I can label the interior as theta, which not only gives the angle its name, but it's also synonymous with the measure of the angle. Remember in geometry, if you were to draw that angle, you did it by like a, a three-letter nomenclature, like you had A, B, and C, right? And you had angle which maybe you did like that, A, B, C. Maybe or not, you didn't draw the arc. But that was different from the measure of angle A, B, C, right? You made such distinctions in geometry. The name of the angle, A, B, C, versus the measure of the angle. Two angles are congruent if their measures are equal, right? That's important when you start getting into theorems like Euclid. He started with nothing. And he built up these postulates, truths based on other truths, deductions that are logical. So you have to get into the nitty gritty when you do that. We're not going to get into that nitty gritty. We're going to use theta not only as the measure of the angle, but we're going to use it as the name of the angle. Okay. So we're not going to use that three letter nomenclature. Now, I want to convert 0.425 to um, degrees, minutes, seconds. And I don't know if I'm going to have time because the announcements are going to come on. So tomorrow we're gonna to start with this. I am gonna take the fractional part, the 0.425 of a full degree, and I'm gonna convert it to minutes and seconds, just like I would with time, right? If this were like 76.425 hours, it would be a little bit less than 76 full hours and a little bit less than half an hour, right? So I know it's gonna be a little bit less than 30 minutes, and if there's any fraction of a minute, I want to convert it to seconds. And I'm waiting any time for Miss Neely to come on. So I'll stop right there. But you got a pretty good start, right? You know who the father of trigonometry is? Hipparchus of Nicaea, Bart, Pitticus, Pitiscus, Bartholomewus is um, the guy who coined the word trigonometry. The father of coordinate geometry is Mr. Redding. No, sorry, I'm pointing. Yeah, 
Mr. Descartes. And if you ever get a dog that's a boy and your wife goes along with it and you're a fan of math, you can name him Archimedes. Barkimedes. There we go. And I'm going to look up a G rating of 400 because I'm curious. I, I have never heard of that. I need to get out more. What? Oh, you did? The gradient. It was invented during the French Revolution starting in 1799. Um, and it divides a circle into 400 degrees because that's a base 10 for a perpendicular angle. So what is Oh, what is so 100 degrees, 200 degrees. The only thing it's still used for is percent grade. So if you're talking about how far up like a hill goes. Like an incline, yeah, incline. okay. A 1% grade would be every 100 feet you go up one foot. Okay. So it's it's a base 10. It never caught on and died with the French Revolution. Oh, like so many others. Yes. Okay. And, and then it would be revised into the metric system. This, this was like a precursor metric system. Oh, a precursor, okay. You did a lot of research yes, I did. while I was talking, which is good. You can multitask. So it's a precursor to the metric system. Now, it's interesting that they called it the gradient because we are going to learn about another way to measure an angle that's called a radian, a radian. And that's what you have to use when you start talking about distances and lengths. You have to use a radian because it's unitless. And if you've taken physics, you might know what a radian is. So perhaps they just added the G to radian to get gradient, I'm guessing. Three sixty, yeah, okay, but uh, see that that I can get along with that because instead of hundred degrees all the way around, every ninety, every quarter turn is hundred degrees. So, you know, I might have voted for that if someone had presented an argument like you did back in the day. But whoever the leader came up with three sixty, the French tried to uh, affect the world and for posterity, but like you said, it didn't catch on. Yeah, that's the thing. All right, awesome.